Do you ever wish you had the wisdom of a dad without the dad bod, or the experience of a grandparent without the wrinkles? This is the teenage body of the Sony A7 III, the old reliable dad. Today I'm going to be reviewing the smallest, most compact, full frame mirrorless camera from Sony, the Sony A7C. This is basically this three year old A7 III in an A6600 body. It's smaller, more compact, now has a flip screen, it's 20% lighter and 30% smaller. It still has the same 24 megapixel sensor with IBIS, almost the same autofocus system with a few upgrades and we'll get to that. But I think this is one of the most important cameras released in 2020 because when technology can't take a big leap forward, it gets smaller, and I love how compact this camera is. Hey, my name is Mark Berger, and I'm a photographer and filmmaker based here in Colorado. If you know someone with a dad bod, you have a dad bod, or you wanna help me out, hit subscribe. I'll do 10 push-ups for everyone that hits subscribe, and that will be benefiting me by getting rid of my dad bod. So let's dive into the build and appearance of the Sony a7C. Now, this camera, as I said before, it's basically an A7 III in an A6600 body. It's missing that viewfinder on the top, and it's just a little bit more condensed, fewer custom buttons. It now has a dedicated record button here on the top, flip out screen, which is handy if you're gonna be filming or photographing yourself, or if you film in studio like this, you can go ahead and review your footage while you're shooting. I also appreciate that this camera Despite the fact that it's in a smaller form factor, I don't feel like it compromises much. It has almost the same settings and offerings as the Sony a7 III. It's just more compact. The viewfinder on this camera is also something that I didn't really love. This small kind of rubber hard plastic piece here just doesn't conform to your eye very well. And it's quite a bit smaller than what you get on the Sony a7 III. You can see the two side by side here. This eye cup conforms to your eye a little bit better and allows you to shoot in bright sunny conditions without getting that bright sunlight that comes in and makes it hard to see the viewfinder. So that could be another reason why you might want to opt for the a7 III because shooting in bright conditions is just a little bit more challenging with the a7C. You can always use the, the viewfinder on the back or you could get an upgraded eyepiece but the stock eyepiece is just not that great for sunny conditions. So next up, let's talk about the ergonomics and handling on the Sony a7C. It now, as I mentioned, has a dedicated record button, which is handy if you're a filmmaker or shoot video. It has a flip screen, which is nice if you're filming yourself in studio, you can see what the camera is capturing while you're recording, or if you wanna take selfies or vlog style video. And now, it has touch to track autofocus. And I will get into more about that when I talk about autofocus. But a few bad things that I think have come from this condensing of the camera size. First off, you only get one custom button down here. Now, as with all Sony cameras, you can customize all the buttons, even the record button, but you no longer have the button over here and you no longer have a button on top. So you miss out on some custom buttons, which is, a little less user friendly, it's just a little slower to use. Additionally, there's no front dial. So on the Sony a7 III, you get a front dial, a back dial, and this control wheel here. So I typically set mine to shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And that allows you to control those three exposure parameters. But with the Sony a7C, you no longer have that front dial. So I put shutter speed here and aperture here, and then you have to click an extra button to access ISO, or you have to dive into the function menu to, to change your settings. So it's just not as quick and user-friendly. There's also no joystick on the back. Typically on the a7 III, people use the joystick to move their autofocus point, but that's not as critical because this camera has the touch to track autofocus. I will get into that in a second. Also, there's now only one card slot here on the side. It has an upgraded door, which is nice. It feels a little bit better designed, but you don't have that instant backup of having two SD card slots 
in the camera body. If you're shooting events like weddings or anything where you wanna have an instant backup where when you get home you can plug one card into your computer and have a second card that just stays in the camera and is already preserving that data, having two card slots is pretty nice to have. One last thing, the shutter caps out at one four thousandth of a second. I find that when I'm shooting with the a7 III, sometimes when I'm shooting at say f1.8 in a bright sunny scenario at ISO 100, you need that extra stop of shutter speed to bring down the exposure enough to get a proper exposure. So when it caps out at one four thousandth of a second, you might find that when shooting with a really fast lens, you're gonna have to use a variable ND filter or some other way of balancing your exposure. I think the bottom line is the a7C is just not as fast to use. So if you're a wedding photographer or you shoot events or you work in a really fast paced environment where compact and lightweight is not the top priority, I'd say take a look at the a7 III. If you're traveling, you want something as small and compact and lightweight as possible, the a7C is perfect. I think despite the drawbacks, there's still a fully functional uh, user interface that's gonna allow you to have a smooth workflow. All right, so I've alluded to this a couple times, but let's talk autofocus. The autofocus on the a7C has the same system, but it now has the upgraded software where it allows you to touch to track. Basically, that allows you to use the touch screen to touch an object and it will track that whether it's moving towards and away from you or it's moving around in the scene. It's a really user-friendly way to track a subject and make sure that it's in focus all the time, whether you're focusing and recomposing or whether it's something like a, say a dog or a cat that's running around in the frame. The AI in this camera is really powerful and it does a really good job tracking things. Um, that's something that we got with the A6600 and with the uh, higher end cameras like the Sony A7S III. But the A7 III, this older version, doesn't have that. And I think it's a really uh, big improvement as far as autofocus and the function of this camera because you're limited with a little bit of the controls that it offers. With that in mind, I think having that touch to track eliminates the need for the joystick and moving your focus point around as much. You can you can quickly you know, pull it away from your eye, touch to track, and it will lock onto that subject. You can also use, if you use back button focus, you can use the focus point to grab that object and then recompose. The autofocus system was one of the main reasons that I switched from Canon to Sony when the Sony a7 III came out. And that is not, that's the same with the a7C. So you're getting that same high quality autofocus system. Next up, let's talk about low light performance. The Sony a7C has the same sensor, so you're not gonna see big improvement there. I find that this caps out at about 6,400 for stills, and if you really need to push it, you can go up to 12,800, but you're gonna need to do some serious noise reduction on those images, or just convert them to black and white. The, the noise level at 6,400 is tolerable, and I think it can produce some really clean prints. If you want the best in low light performance, go get the A7S III. That's gonna be a big jump in price point, but it's gonna give you that you know, ISO performance at say 25,000 or even 50,000 that is gonna to be totally usable. In terms of image quality, you're getting the same thing as the A7 III. It's gonna be clean, 24 megapixel, sharp images with good color. The A7C does have a slight upgrade in color science, and I found that that was more applicable when shooting video. It uses the same color science as the Sony a7S III, which just has uh, a little bit cleaner colors and is a little bit less work to grade if you're shooting video. I find that image quality is often very dependent on the lens. So with the Sony a7C, they announced a new kit lens. I am definitely not a big fan of kit lenses. That, I think it's a 20, 28 to 60 millimeter lens that comes with this camera as an option, I would suggest you not get the kit lens. I think you'd be much better off getting, say, a Sigma or a Tamron or a Rokinon uh, 
prime lens. It's going to be sharper. It's going to have a faster aperture and overall it's going to produce better images for a lower price. If you're really serious, you're going to want to get some higher end Sony lenses. You could go the prime route or you could get some of the G master zooms if you want the best in quality. I talked a little bit about video, but the video out of this camera is really good quality. You're getting 4k 30 frames per second or HD uh, 1080 at 120 frames per second. So this camera is, is not going to match what the a seven S three is putting out. That's a jump in price where you get 4k 120 frames per second, but this camera will produce some really nice video. And I think it makes a great B cam note that it is only an eight bit camera. So it doesn't have the 10 bit color on the a seven S three, but it's very usable. It's, it's a totally functional camera. And if you're only going to shoot in uh, regular speed, not try to shoot in slow motion, you know, you can still shoot in 4k and get some, get some excellent quality out of it. Overall, this is a really solid camera. If your priority is compact and lightweight, this is definitely the camera to get. You get that full frame performance in a super compact body. If you want fast paced shooting, if you shoot events or work in some kind of environment where you need uh, backup and dual card slots, this is not the camera for you. This camera is meant for, in my case, I think I'm gonna be using it out in the mountains when I'm out running or climbing and I want excellent image quality, but I don't want to carry a big camera and I just want something compact that'll fit in my jacket pocket or tuck it in my vest or wherever. Something lightweight that still gives that performance that you get and I have come to enjoy in the a7 III. I think it's super impressive that Sony can take technology and make it more compact. I love that they're making full frame cameras with such a slim profile. I think that is gonna be the future and I'm excited about this camera as things continue to trend more this direction. Lastly, I wanna talk about value. This camera, just the body, is running at $1,800. You can get a used Sony a7 III for probably around $1,500. So in comparison of value, you know, getting a used a7 III is probably gonna be a better bet. But with the a7C, you're getting a slight upgrade in autofocus, you're getting a slight upgrade in color science for video. You're getting the flip out screen, which is super handy. And a few other minor little feature upgrades that I think make this a really value added camera in 2021. Additionally, I think the a7C is gonna hold its value better than the a7 III. This three year old camera is gonna continue to decrease in value. Whereas I think the a7C being that it's the most compact full frame camera out there, I think is gonna retain its value. When the a7 IV comes out, you're gonna see a ton of a7 III's on the market. Whereas the a7C is a little bit more specialized and I think it's gonna hold its value better. If you wanted to spend the extra money and get the a7C, there's a ton of third party lens offerings available from Sigma, from Tamron, Samyang, and a lot of others that are making some really affordable options to create a, you know, if you're building out a camera system with some prime lenses or even some zoom lenses, there's some great options out there. I hope you enjoyed my review of the Sony a7C. I'd love to hear in the comments if you guys have any questions about specifics about this camera, how it compares to the Sony a7 III and anything else you'd like to know. I hope if you get this camera, you're gonna take it on an epic adventure, whether that's traveling or going out in the mountains on a light and fast mission. Thanks so much for being here. I'll see you in the next video.